And we're back. So I either fixed it or broke it. Folks who are listening, let me know. Does this come across clear now? And I appreciate your patience. Thank you so much. Uh, let me bring Avram back onto the stage. All right, say something. Yeah, it sounds good. Awesome. It Thank sounds, you. I didn't speak, I didn't say anything. Oh, I good. read a comment. <laughs> yeah, I read a comment. Thank you so much, uh, Tals from Meadowbear for letting us know. Perfect. Well, we're just gonna rewind and restart and hi everyone. I think it's Friday and that's that. <laughs> no, the, the, the computer doesn't wanna work anymore. The mics don't wanna work anymore, but I'm happy that you're here with us today because we have a treat for you. If you're interested in backend tools or cloud engineering, you're at the right place. We're gonna learn from Avram again. Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us from Thank Metal you, Bear, an open source project. So Avram, first of all, I wanna know quickly who you are and where are you joining us from? Awesome. So hi, everyone. My name is Aviram Hassan. I'm uh, 27 years old, uh, joining in from uh, Tel Aviv, Israel. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here because I know it's kind of late for you as well. <laughs> this is, I go, listen, I go to bed at eight, so that is late for me. <laughs> but um, thank you for being here. We're super excited to learn about your project. Um, I'm going to ask a few questions and then hopefully our audience will also have some questions to ask. So if you do have questions about the project itself or any questions for Avram, please don't hesitate to post them in the comments and I'll go ahead and ask them for you. So question of the hour. All right. You are Metal Bear. What is Metal Bear? Yeah, so Metal Bear is a backend tools company. Uh, we founded it for developing open source tools for backend engineers. We are global and remote first with team members from Brazil, Canada, Germany, and Israel. Uh, actually, our first uh, team members were recruited uh, from Reddit based on their open source contributions on GitHub uh, with no prior professional experience. They had great commits and it was a better test to their experience uh, more than uh, uh, having a regular CV with uh, uh, professional experience. Um, so yeah, we are currently working on our first product. It's called MirrorD. Uh, what MirrorD does, it lets you work on a remote environment from your local setup seamlessly. Um, we started working on MirrorD from around February and uh, the code is open source and we started building the community. We even started uh, doing releases. We are we're currently at version uh, 2.11 and will soon uh, to release our next major version, uh, version three, uh, which will have uh, tons of new features and uh, hopefully will solve many problems uh, that backend engineers uh, face in their daily lives. Awesome, thank you. So later on, I do want to ask you, like, where did this idea come from? I think a lot of things, and I love the, the story about your how your hire happened. This is why it's so important, folks, that if you're out there contributing to open source, you know that this actually leads to opportunities, right? I love that you actually hire someone based on their commits and what they were doing for the project. So we're going to dig into all of that. But first, I want to see the stuff. Show me the sauce. <laughs> Let's see what Metal Bear does. Let's see what um, your new product does. So if you don't mind just sharing a demo with us, that'd be great. Yeah, awesome. Um, one second. Hopefully, we won't have any other uh, <laughs> technical issues. Um, yeah, just, so can you see me? Here we now? are. Yes, if you would be able to zoom in just a bit, um, I think that might be a little bit better. Just yeah. a bit, not a whole lot, just so that we can see. But yeah, folks in the audience, does that look good? Yeah, it looks good. I, I can now read it. So fantastic. Awesome. So um, this is uh, just showing the setup. Um, so we set up a Kubernetes uh, cluster with a demo uh, of, a, of an architecture uh, by uh, Weaveworks. It's, uh, it has many microservices and the setup is like you have the user, you have a front-end service that is a Node.js, and then you have uh, tons of other back-end uh, services in different languages and uh, with uh, different uh, logic. And for this demo, we're just going to focus on the uh, first back-end service, the back-end service that provides the front-end. Um, for ease of uh, understanding. Um, so this is what we have uh, deployed. Uh, we can see here in the, in the terminal all the, one second. Uh, 
I'll zoom in here also. Oh, too much. I mean, we see everything. That's great. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, so we have all the services running and everything is working. So we can just go on to the site and browse. And this is, of course, a very simple. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we have services online, we can browse and use it. And the idea with MirrorD is that I can, uh, uh, many times when you develop software, you want to see how it behaves in real life. And for that, you either run it locally. And then when you start uh, having a more complex architecture, uh, you need a lot of requirements. For example, if you're running off uh, Azure, you would have a many services of Azure, like storage, like uh, uh, queue services, databases, and then it becomes uh, sometimes even unmanageable to set, set up all of this locally or for each developer. And the idea is to create a solution that lets the developer work on the remote environment from the uh, uh, co comfort of their own uh, machine. So we have, we have here the version of the uh, VS Code extension um, that, that uh, MIRD comes as. So MIRD comes as a VS Code extension, CLI, and, and also uh, for other IDs. Uh, but basically, we primarily focus on the ID, on the VS Code and CLI. And what you can see here actually is uh, the, basic, the most basic feature is to run the process with remote traffic. So instead of uh, uh, starting to, uh, to test with different parameters and trying to mock what will happen in a real environment, um, you can just run the service locally, see how it behaves with real traffic coming from your a remote environment and, and, and the next features we're adding to MIRD and some are already available is to actually have more of the context of the cloud. For example, you would have access to databases as if you're running on the remote code. You would have access to files, to environment variables, and I'll show this all, all in a bit. So um, we have here the code of the front end service. Um, and we have MIRD extension here. So you can see, uh, let's say, uh, open it so you can see here the disabled MIRD. Uh, we can also enable it. Let's leave it uh, enabled right now. And now when I can, I can click on debugging the service and then it will start running. It will let me choose which part to impersonate as this service. So I'm running the front end service. So I want to impersonate the remote front end part and I will click on that. And now I will wait for it to start running. And we see here that it started running. And I've set here breakpoints from uh, uh, previously. And we can see that uh, requests that come to the catalog should be intercepted, not intercepted, but mirrored. So it's, uh, what we will see is that the website will still work, but um, uh, I will be able to inspect the request and see how it happens and how it interacts with my code. So let's say uh, just do that. And as you can see, we start we start seeing uh, requests coming in. We can see as if it, it came to us. We can see all the data coming in in the ID. And as you saw, the website still works, right? It's even so, though I'm debugging it, it's not that I'm debugging the remote instance, but I'm mirroring the traffic coming to the real service. And then I can walk locally in the traffic and see how it behaves, I modify it, test it a bit. And then when I feel uh, comfort enough, I will be able also, to, I, I can be able, I, I will be able also to um, steal the traffic and then see how it really behaves in the remote environment. Um, so this is the basic example. Uh, let's uh, close that and let's just show you the CLI and the argument. So this is how it works with the CLI. You have merely exec minus P, P for pod. H is the pod minus N for namespace. And this is the namespace to run the, the cluster in. And then you provide the binary and the argument to the binary. So we're just running a server JS. We can just do that. And it will do the same as the extension as well, just from the CLI version. Um, and a bit about more elaborate options. So you can do my MIRD help. So we have already TCP still. Uh, we have override env, and um, we have enabled TCP outgoing, which means that I can access remote services on behalf of the pod and remote DNS. So the reason it's only uh, as feature flags is because it's not that stable yet. We, as we said, we're working on it uh, uh, a lot. 
uh, and we're also working uh, in uh, sample semantic versioning. So we don't want to introduce breaking changes. So we just add more features. We let users enable them of themselves. But uh, when version three comes in, then most of the features will be enabled by default. So we just do major the exec, and you would you would get the remote DNS, the remote traffic, a uh, mirroring, and uh, the environment variable. So you could just plug in to a remote pod that is already running without needing to fetch the environment variables, understand what databases you need access to, um, what files you need to have locally, what permissions. And you can just start working on real traffic and see how it behaves. And when you feel um, more comfortable with the APIs coming in and APIs going out, you can enable the TCP still and actually be the service that returns the response to the actual user. Um, yeah, so I hope it uh, made sense. Any questions so far? <laughs> no, thank you so much. I mean, that's super thrilling. I appreciate that you have a CLI as well as a, a VS Code extension. I've shared the uh, extension URL on the chat. So if folks want to go ahead and download that plugin, you can just download it directly from VS Code. Uh, but this is really super interesting. You know, there is a ton of stuff out there right now being written about um, in production testing and how like now you shouldn't spend so much time uh, creating all these staging testing scenarios where just going into production and being able to like what this tool does, right? Being able to mirror and then test and not have the site down. Um, that's, that's just amazing. Um, quick question though. So when you when you start in this, uh, can you control like what what you uh, what cluster actually you access? Like what you impersonate? Um, how do how does that work? And you can explain it to me like I'm five because I don't know much about backend development. <laughs> okay, so um, let's do a bit of a technical deep dive because it might be interesting to the to you and the audience. Yes, please. Um, so um, the way uh, Mirdi works, it has a uh, about uh, uh, two main components, let's call it. So the, f the, the first component is the component that is running on the machine of the developer. And that component uh, executes the process and also loads to the process that it's running. So no matter whatever you're running, we can uh, insert ourselves into it. Of course, with some exceptions or some uh, scenarios, we don't support it, but you can we can insert ourselves in. And when we're inserted into it, we um, hijack all the routines that do any uh, file system access, environment variable access, uh, network access. So basically, we're control controlling and sandboxing what, what the process sees and does. And when we can do that, we can choose what happens locally, what happens remotely. And we have like a smart facade running locally that decides like, OK, I want remote traffic. I want local traffic. I want remote files, local files. And I can actually control. Okay, uh, if if it has a side effects, I can uh, disallow it or allow it. And on the cluster side, we have an agent running that uh, is spawned automatically uh, using the CLI. Uh, you don't need to install and pre-install anything apart from uh, uh, the CLI on your desktop or the extension. And the CLI spawns the agent, and the agent acts as a proxy. So whatever they the local uh, a local uh, machine wants to do with the local process, the, ag the agent on the cluster side is responsible for actually uh, executing and, and uh, performing this. And the agent runs in the context of the remote pod. So it's as if you're running on the pod itself. So it's basically having the closest you can to, re to run in real life in, in production without deploying the all right, that's awesome. Thank you so much. That actually paints a picture that I can see and understand. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. And and folks who are watching, if you have any questions, um, I'm sure Aviram wouldn't mind digging into more of the technical aspects of how he built this thing. Uh, so don't be shy. Go ahead and ask any questions. I also share a blog post that um, was on your website from when you were introduced uh, Mirror D back in May. Uh, which has got some excellent graphics making the case for testing in production, uh, which is really great. So I, I do, I love the dynamic there because in the tone of the post is amazing. So go ahead and give it a read, folks. Um, why did you make this? I mean, usually these things happen because you have a problem that nothing out there is solving. But I love to hear, like, what was your motivation behind building this? Yeah, so uh, me and AR, my co-founder and partner at Metalville, 
we uh, worked together at a fintech company called Biocatch, and uh, we were at the backend group, and we experienced a lot of issues that plagued the daily work of backend developers. Right? We were really annoyed by that, and we thought like we were underserved. Like we saw many tools for DevOps and many tools for other departments, and for engineers, there's like the IDE, debuggers, etc. But like we didn't have like any tool that helped us uh, uh, work on our. It, it didn't. We had a tool that solved our real issues, and the real issues we had is that um, the uh, one of the biggest values we had was to experience real traffic, like off staging and off production, and uh, we wanted to cut that cycle. Um, we wanted to create a tool that lets you interact uh, with staging and production from day one instead of meeting it after all the CI/CD steps, which are, are of course. Uh, uh, necessary, but sometimes the CI CD just slows you down from seeing how it behaves in real life. And in real life, all the code you've done or the tests you've done doesn't really matter because uh, you mismatched an SDK version and the cloud service you're using is different. <laughs> and the, there's a lot of uh, inconsistency, inconsistency there. And we want also to solve the problem of developer environment. So um, right now you set up in, in big companies, you set up a developer environment per developer. And I'm not talking about the developer space, like code space, because it doesn't really, we, we can work with code space because code space allows you to have some IDE to work on, but you won't run the whole cluster on the uh, on the code space because you would need managed services, you need state, and that's the real problem, right? It's not to set up the environment. In, in big companies, you have infrastructure as code, so setting up environments is easy but working and doing it at scale that's the problem and that's like our vision for it so we want developers to work at the same environment concurrently uh, collaborating when they want and to feel isolated when they don't want like when they want to be isolated of course so. <laughs> got it that's awesome so tell me about what the project is right now um are you accepting contributions from folks who want to collaborate um and if you are how can we get started? Yeah, so actually we have a few great contributors that are also doing it on a, a weekly, daily basis. And we're accepting more, of course. And just to make it clear, uh, um, I, I believe that open contributing to open source is not just writing code. Like we had people fixing the documentation, the getting started, uh, the website. M most of our... Uh, stuff are open source so if you see something on our site in the blog post anything is incorrect feel free to open an issue like opening an issue is contribution from our uh, point of view because sometimes we do have blind spots and just having someone telling us hey this doesn't work this is not well explained so feel free to open issues and if you want also to fix those and suggest changes that's uh, that's uh, more than welcome and we appreciate that and we have the getting started instead of uh, uh, getting started for contributions uh, in case you want to uh, get into code. And we're also willing to uh, mentor new people. We have people that started learning Rust using our code base. And we uh, uh, they joined our Discord channel. And then we started talking. They said, hey, we want this ticket. And we helped them uh, do the first issue on GitHub and provided them with guidance. And that's. Uh, that's great. I think it, it's good. Um, it's great uh, from our side because then we can see the blind spots. Like we have experience, we know the project, and having someone coming from the outside and getting on, and getting started, something that we do have because we recruited new engineers on uh, some basis. But like having people regularly doing the onboarding and starting to work uh, really gives us the, the overview of what is lacking, what we need to improve on. So just to sum up. Uh, using Miro D and provide feedback with us like the best. Uh, take part in our Discord community for backend engineers. Um, open issues about improvements for documentation. Same for features, report bugs, and uh, that's basically it. <laughs> Great. Let me grab the links to the Discord group as well. So this is a group that you created, right? Um, yeah, for so backend should... engineers. We, we, we want Melbourne to be the brand that resonates with backend engineers because we see MiroD as our first solution and we think it's a very broad solution. Like we do feel it's very deep and it has a lot of development needed, but we want to, to be the productivity company for backend engineers. So 
uh, we see HashiCorp as like a, a role model, like HashiCorp is for DevOps and HashiCorp develops so many tools for DevOps that uh, DevOps love. Like <laughs> if, if there was a tool developed by uh, HashiCorp, they would go for that and not for the competitor. And we want to do the same for backend engineers. And of course, we start small, not so small, but <laughs> with the first uh, project. Awesome. So you heard it first here from Aviram. If you want to contribute with just using the product, onboarding on it, and giving feedback, a fresh set of eyes, that's amazing. Then you can go to the repo. I've put the repo on the chat notes and go ahead and check out their contribution guidelines and get in there. And I appreciate you mentioning that you're welcoming also uh, other contributions other than code. That's great. So if folks are into documentation or even, you know, even the organizing of a Discord server and like running that community, that's also a way of helping open source. So I appreciate you like opening that space for people to be able to do that. Um, we do have a question from our audience. Let me go ahead and bring it up. And thank you so much, Time Labs, for joining. Appreciate you. Um, and Time Labs 7 would like to know, how do you think about developers using Mirrodin in production? Is there role management or something to manage this? Yeah, so just to be clear right now, Mirrodin is, is, is very early. So uh, I don't, we don't recommend to use it in production as is right now. Um, but the plan is to, we, we say that like the roadmap is, to start by elevating uh, developers in the uh, current developer environment and making it easier for them work, to work on the remote environments and then move to shared environments in staging. And once the company feels safe enough, they would go and even uh, do it on production. And once we gather, we will already have enough features to protect you and also role management and access management to uh, to let you be able to run this on production and also on the shared environment that is not production without causing chaos. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate the answer and thank you time last for the question. Um, folks, if you have any other questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. I've also shared, this is the direct invite to that Discord server. So I hope that's okay, Aviram. I should have asked you first. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. We welcome everyone. Yeah. Uh, if you're, you're, start, you're just starting, if you're senior, if you're, uh, I don't know, trying, thinking about transitioning to backend. Um, I think I, I grew up in online communities, so I really like uh, this kind of stuff. I learned everything from the internet. So if it could be of help to anyone, also feel free to reach out on uh, DM on Discord, LinkedIn, May, I don't know, uh, whatever channel you prefer. Um, Smoke discussion. signals, something. Yeah. We can reach him. <laughs> and I'll be sure to also uh, go ahead and drop in your Twitter handle. So folks, go ahead and follow Aviram, follow Metal Bear, so that you can stay tuned on all the new releases for Mirror D and all the amazing things you're working on. Um, so I have a question for you. So if I want to join your community, obviously, I'm not back in. It's not my specialty. It's not. But so you're open to people that are just trying to get started, right? Like that's. That's yeah, um, of course. yeah, awesome. I love that. Thank you so much. And our uh, folks, take advantage of this opportunity. You know, there is not a lot of open source projects that you get to be there from the beginning and actually be a part of that growth. So this is this is a really unique opportunity for all of you to participate in the project. So if you're back end curious, even if that's not your thing, go ahead and join the community because um, you'll be able to learn. Awesome. All right. So I think we have about all the questions uh, from the audience. Um, I'll keep an eye on the chat. So if there is any other question, we can go ahead and answer it. Um, for those of you who might have joined later on before we were having some sound issues at the beginning, but this is recording and I will upload the recording to YouTube. So we'll be able to, you'll be able to go back and see it and see the demo uh, on your own time. Um, I have some off-topic questions to ask you because I know Rizal likes to ask folks some questions so they can get to know you. Um, and one of them is, what's your favorite food? I love that. Mm. I got to answer. <laughs> um, I would say it would might sound weird, but uh, plain tomato pasta, like uh, just uh, pasta with tomato sauce, uh, very plain. But uh, uh, I, th I think it's a... Uh, it's very attached to what I grew up on, so <laughs> childhood memories. 
<laughs> yeah, that's like a comfort food, right? So yeah. you associate it with that. It's I simple all the time. Uh, I'm lazy. I don't. I need to cook stuff for me and my wife. And like, okay, <laughs> no make it a pasta. Yeah, yeah. No, no need to check the fridge for groceries. It's always available. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Hey, I want to get to know people who are listening. So go ahead and type on the chat. I want to know what your favorite food is. I don't know. I alternate, but I'm pretty simple too, like steak and potatoes. Simples. Um, oh, we got a new question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see. Telepresence. Um, is this a similar product to Mirror D? How is it different than Mirror D? Yeah, cool. So excellent question. So um, <laughs> pizza for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we heard about telepresence. It's, uh, we, we're trying to solve the same use cases. So it's actually like a, a competing product, but the difference, the difference is how that A, we run on the post level, like uh, telepresence change, alters the operating system all uh, runs via container. So it needs to edit other stuff, it sets up VPN, and we work just on the process level. So we believe it provides better user experience. So you don't have to modify your whole uh, system and you feel like plugged in into the pod with the file access, no mounts, uh, no bringing environment variables manually. So that's like the, the, the first uh, big difference. And the second, our approach is that we want to be as non-intrusive as possible. So you can just start using, you duplicate the traffic, you don't intercept. We will have a feature to, that is similar to intercept that you can steal traffic, but that's like um, our agenda is to be something that can be ran on production so uh, without uh, even interfering and developing features that uh, that protect you from uh, from uh, interfering with each other so yeah that, that's like the, ba the basic we can go and uh, elaborate more but that's like the high level and feel free to reach out on discord or uh, any github discussion if you have any question about it wonderful thank you thanks again for the question time last seven uh, thank you, Avram. Another off-topic question while we begin closing it down. And folks, if you have any questions, I've shared the repo. I've shared Avram's Twitter account. Give him a follow. Are your DMs open? His DMs are open. Yeah, of course. <laughs> there you go. So that he, I'm sure you'd be happy to like answer any questions and, and you know get excited about contributing if, if you're into back-end development. Um, so the other question that result, result, these are tough questions. Uh, it would be for me tough to answer this. What's your favorite Beyonce song? Or do you have a favorite Beyonce song? Who knows? You might not be a Beyonce fan, which I wouldn't say that out loud here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say um, Crazy in Love. That's a classic. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for the demo. Uh, folks, I totally apologize for the issues at the beginning. We'll figure out what went wrong. I think it's just Friday and we're just ready to be done for the day. Um, I, I do want to know what your favorite Beyonce song is. So go ahead and post it on the chat. I'll do a shout out too. Thank you very much, everyone who joined, everyone who's watching the recording. Don't forget to follow Avidam on Twitter and go ahead and check out the Metal Bear repository. Take a look at MirrorD and the contributor guidelines and get, get started. This is an exciting thing to be a part of something that's, you know, newer-ish, right? Newer-ish. So that's <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Avidam, any closing thoughts? What are you doing this weekend? I'm very noisy. I'm way noisier than Rizal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't notice so, uh, um, what I'm doing. So basically, uh, this because <laughs> in Israel this is the weekend. <laughs> um, well, it will be probably a family time. Like, uh, just chill, you know. It's <laughs> we have a very busy weekday, so on the weekend uh, I try to chill as much as possible. Nothing special. Like take a walk, uh, go outside, eat something. Nothing special. Nice. I mean, that sounds special you? enough. There you go. That sounds special enough for me. Um, I am. Um, what am I doing? I'm taking my kids to Bush Gardens tomorrow. So wish me luck. I'm gonna get yeah. shaken up and all those roller coasters. So it'll be fun. <laughs> it'll be a fun day. And then it's yeah. a long weekend in America. So hey, all of you who are in the states celebrating Labor Day, go ahead and take that Labor Day off. Um, yeah. And then we'll be back here next Friday with another amazing guest talking about open source projects that are definitely changing the game out there. I'm excited to just keep touch with you and see where Metal Bear goes. Um, thank you so much for being here and sharing your Friday with us. It was a great experience. Thank you.
Uh, thank you. Thank thanks you. everyone for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who watched us today. Um, don't forget to go ahead and give Abiram a follow. Go to the project on GitHub. Give it a star. If you have any questions, post them on the chat or go into the discussion on those repos. Thank you for joining us for Open Source Friday. It's an honor to be here with you. Now, go enjoy the weekend. I said you can be off now. <laughs> don't fire me, boss. I promise I'll still work the rest of the day. <laughs> Take care, everyone.